I'd like to ask you about a timely topic that many of our readers have been um, concerned with and have been struck with confusion, because as we've been talking about, there are sadly many theologians, priests, and even sadly bishops in the church who are uh, promoting heresy, promoting immoral behavior. Um, and in, in light of that, many of them seem not to be judged by the church. But in early July, a judgment did come from the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, uh, declaring an excommunication, Lady Citancia, against uh, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. And I, I'd like to get your opinion on that. I, uh, first, I'd like to ask you to explain to our, our readers, is your reading of the decree, because some people have claimed Archbishop Vigano was punished for heresy. First, could you clear up, is, is that actually what was said? And is that true? No, to my understanding, in my understanding, it is he was formally punished of the crime of heresy, of schism, yes. not of heresy. Yes. And uh, and this is, but as you mentioned, I lament that uh, so many bishops and clergy who are plainly, openly spreading heresies, mm. <laughs> they are not punished. This is unjust. This is a double measure. And in some aspect, heresy is more dangerous than schism. Mm. Schism is traditionally defined it's against charity and unity, whereas heresy it is deeper. It is it is undermining the foundations of all our faith itself. Mm -hmm. So it is more dangerous. And this is uh, I lament that so many clergymen are this strictness of the Holy See, mm -hmm. with which it reacted against. Um, statements or schismatic statements of Bishop Archbishop Vigano, uh, this should be applied the more to concrete heretical clergymen, mm -hmm. church, and this I lament. Mm -hmm. Beyond that more specifically, and, and maybe you haven't looked at it enough, but if you had, do you think this judgment of schism then is is just against Archbishop Vigano, or do you think it's not just? Well, I lament also, I regret that Archbishop Vigano is basically um, promoting and, and stating uh, say the vacantism, mm -hmm. because he does not recognize uh, the validity, the authority of the reigning pontiff, mm -hmm. Pope Francis which the entire church, this is important, the entire church, mm -hmm. the entire episcopacy, the entire college of cardinals, since his election, recognized him and is recognizing as the valid pope. And so this was the constant and more sure tradition of the church. Mm -hmm. We had in the history of the church several cases of evident invalid papal elections. It would be very good to study carefully the history of the papacy. And there were. But subsequently, the peaceful or the de facto acceptance of an invalidly elected pope by the majority of the episcopate and the faithful uh, made this pope then de facto a valid pope and the church, the Holy See, uh, recognized these popes as valid. In the list, in the Annuario Pontificio, there are many cases with, uh, when you research history, were evidently invalid. And the election mode, it is not a divine law. Mm -hmm. And what is not divine law has not an absolute 
validity and absolute value. So this is the error of Archbishop Vigano. He establishes a human law, which is the law of an election of a Pope. He absolutizes it. Mm. And this is not according to the constant and perennial uh, meaning and tradition and practice of the Catholic Church, of the Holy See. And then also the issue of heretical Pope, it is still a theory of theologians, even saint theologians. It is not an official teaching of the magisterium, not. And we have to distinguish this. And then to quote only one Pope, Paul the Fourth, with his uh, bull about heretical Pope, it is not sufficient because it was not an ex cathedra definition. The Church never recognized this bull as an infallible teaching. No Pope uh, and uh, and his successors did not continue and did not repeat in their public statements and bulls and, and constitutions what Paul the the fourth established. And therefore, the contrary, the old canon law, uh, for example, the Corpus Juris Canonici, it was a collection of canon law until 1917, and there was contained an expression of the 12th century that the Pope cannot be judged by no one mm. unless he deviates from the faith. In this sense, he will be heretic. But the magisterium of the church did not teach it. The popes did not teach it in their documents, with exception of only one pope, in the 16th century. So this is not sufficient. One Pope is not sufficient. It must be a perennial, a constant teaching of the Church. And then, the contrary, the Court of Canon Law of 1917, which was called the Court of Pius and Benedict, the Popes, Pio Benedictinum, uh, they removed this phrase of the old Corpus Juris Canonici. So if it would be the sense of the Church to continue with this and what said Paul the Fourth, they would uh, have not removed this phrase from the canon law, but it was removed in 1917 and not more repeated. Mm. So. This is simply a fact we have to consider to be truly the mean, the Catholic meaning and the sensitiricum ecclesia, which is, I repeat, it must be perennial, constantly through the centuries, uh, maintained, repeated, not by theologians only, but by the magisterium of the church. And until now, it is a theory or an opinion of theologians, but not an official teaching of the church. Hmm. I don't know if you would agree, but it's been my opinion for some time that one of the dangers of a, a state of a contest position is the danger of curiosity. You want to know everything. Is this theory correct? What would happen if this pope did that? And rather than understanding there may be some facts or things about the temporal life of the church that we may not know in this lifetime and that are left up to God, and that we don't really need to to worry too much about these things because the church has given us the, the principles to live upon, the truths, and whatever's happening at the highest level of the church we can proceed to save our souls. Do you think that that is a, uh, that opinion is a good opinion and a way to think about this matter, or would you correct something in that? Yes, okay. I think the basic <clears throat> error of sedevacantists mm. is one of their basic errors. Yes. It's 
that they <clears throat> infallibilize absolutely the Pope. So mm -hmm. that the Pope is 24 hours infallible. Yes. And this is not Catholic. This is a, a distortion of the Catholic dogma of infallibility. The infallibility is very precisely <laughs> defined uh, and there are conditions of to be an expression infallible. And the, the church says, canon law, a doctrine is not infallible unless it is clearly manifested as such. Unless it is clearly manifested as such. So we cannot simply say this is infallible what the Pope speaks or, or his documents. Mm -hmm. they, are not, they must be very careful exam, examined if this is. And so the people who promote Sedevacantism, they commit this basic error mm -hmm. to of a total or absolute infallibilization of the papal uh, magisterium. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when they state an error, an ambiguity, an her or a material heresy of uh, of a Pope who, who or of the Council and so on, they, they make the wrong um, consequence yes. and saying that there, are no, there is no magisterium, there is no Pope. And the other, which you mentioned, it's a lack of trust and supernatural vision mm. of the indestructibility of the church, that in spite of evident errors spread even by a pope, uh, that God is still guiding his church, and God is um, holding the church in his in his hands mm. and and this phenomenon <clears throat> of doctrinal confusion <clears throat> spread by <clears throat> even our pope <clears throat> is only <clears throat> temporal mm. it is temporal we have to <clears throat> to wait and then the god will intervene <clears throat> as he did in the past simply study the history of the church and he will intervene, it is his church. And this uh, set of vacantist attitudes, it is also a kind of a human solution. Now we take in our hands the situation and we will resolve it. We will simply declare the Pope is not Pope, mm -hmm. or we will elect a new Pope, or we will, we will establish a committee or a kind of imperfect council as in other expressions they invent then. It is all a human solution in an issue which can only basically and ultimately resolve God himself yes. as Christ manifested it at that time <clears throat> during the storm uh, on the sea where the disciples were with him on the boat and then started a, a huge <clears throat> storm and the waters came in, in the boat and they were incapable to resolve the situation and only the Lord, he stood up, he was sleeping, but he stood up <clears throat> and ordered, commanded to the wind and storm to be silent, and this the, the Lord will do also in our time. So, this <clears throat> um, set of vacantists, uh, several, they lack the basic trust, supernatural trust, that the Lord will intervene. It is not uh, promotion of our passivity. They say some say then respond. Oh, uh, you are uh, you are simply passive and do nothing. We do, we do. We can and must. In such cases, um, admonish the Pope. Mm -hmm. 
advise him respectfully, not with irrespectful language, which unfortunately Archbishop Vigano is using sometimes, but respectfully admonish him to help him and uh, to spread the true faith. This we can, this is activity. And uh, pray for the Pope, do penance for the Pope, do expiation for him, reparation. This is very much active. It's not passive. Mm. But leave to the Lord his task. It's not your task to depose the Pope and to declare him not Pope. It is the Lord who will do this through his church after this pontificate. But better that we must implore with fervent prayers that the Pope before he dies will have the grace, the immense grace of God mm. to retract, to retract all his ambiguities and all what he did, what was contributing to confusion.